Hi, this is Kian once again. Welcome to Prayer Line. Precious one, I want you to know that today is the day the Lord God Almighty has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you are alive, be grateful and be thankful and know that the Lord has been good and His goodness and mercies endure it forever and ever. Maybe today you haven't seen the light at the end of the tunnel, but I know that probably you are going through hard times, difficult times. But I, what I want to tell you today, prophetically, that to, today, what you are going through, tomorrow it will be history. What you are going through today, tomorrow it's going to be history. Because the Bible makes us to understand that a righteous man, the righteous man, the child of God, will go through diverse kinds of problems, difficult situations in life, challenges, disappointment, regret. You no, know, sometimes be being even uh, giving up, despair. But at the end of the day, by the Lord God Almighty delivers them from their, them all. The righteous man may go through many challenges, many trials, many problems, but God delivers them from them all. And I pray that God Himself will deliver you from all the problems that is uh, weighing you down or you are going through right now. You will go through and come out successfully. You are not going to. You are going through it. You come out successfully. That is the word of God for you. Don't give up. For help is on the way to you. May Jesus Christ bring help to you even the name. In his name which is above every other name. May God Almighty reach out to you. And minister to your specific need. As you hear me even right now. I don't know what the need is. But I pray that God will address that need. In your life it could be financial it could be healing it could be restoration in your marriage it could be a bad report you've just had don't be afraid god says that what you are hearing and what is causing you to be panicked or afraid or stressful and anxious tomorrow it will be history because you will come through hold your peace god will fight for you god will deliver you god will help you we serve a faithful god god bless you Precious one, today I'm, I'm starting a series called The Eagle's Diet. Eagle's Diet or The Eagle's Food. The Bible makes us to understand that those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength and they will be able to mount up on wings like the eagle. When you and I learn to wait upon the Lord through fasting, praying and reading the word of God and digesting the word of God until our lives is filled with the word of God, and the Holy Spirit is, is taking full control over our lives. I tell you the truth. There's no situation. There's no problem. There's no mountain. There's no challenge that the devil will bring your way. Which you cannot overcome. Because God himself. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Bible says that greater is he who lives in us. Than every problem outside. So when you and I depend on wait upon the Lord. We will renew our strength. And be able to mount up on wings like egg. We will run and not be worried. We will walk and not faint. The Bible also makes us to understand those who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Those who know their God. And that's why eagles diet is when you and I get into the word of God, read it, understand it, meditate on it, and allow it to be part of our lives until we are not moved by what we see, what we hear, or our prevailing circumstances. But we are only moved by the word of God until every situation obeys the word of God in our lives. You, you, you don't have to allow your situation to um, control you. You have to allow your situation to obey the word of God in your life. And everything submits to the word of God. Because the word of God is Jesus. The word of God is Jesus. And the Bible says that the mention of the name Jesus, every knee should bow. Those in the heavens, those on the earth, those under the earth. Everything should bow to the name Jesus Christ. The word of God, remember, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Jesus Christ, who was the word, came and dwelt amongst us and brought salvation to as many as believed on him. 
to them he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one has access to the Father except through Jesus Christ. The Bible also makes us to understand that the devil, Satan, the deceiver, the adversary, the one who wants to kill, steal, and destroy your life, comes only to do that. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, to bring confusion, to bring uh, uh, suicide ideation, to bring uh, commotion and confusion, misunderstanding, strife into marriages, to destroy children, to, to destroy your, your, your labor. The devil, that is his work. But the Bible says that though he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus Christ brings life and brings it much more abundantly. The Bible says, for this reason, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Savior, came that he, may, he might destroy the works of the enemy. That is delivering you and I from the bondage of the enemy, saving us from our sins, and also helping us through life to be able to become overcomer, to live for him, for his glory. That is the relevance of the eagle's diet, eagle's food. We digesting the word of God. And today, uh, we, I want us to meditate on what the word of God is. The word of God. I told you the word of God is Jesus Christ. The word of God is Jesus Christ. And let us look to um, Luke chapter 4 verse 4. Luke chapter 4 verse 4. When the devil told Jesus Christ, after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says he was hungry and he was very weak and weary. And the devil came to him and he says, if you are the son of God, why don't you turn these stones to bread? And Jesus Christ answered in Luke chapter 4 verse 4. He says that, but Jesus answered him, Satan, saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god meaning man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceeded from the mouth of god that is what we live by we are not just allowing ourselves to live by the things we see we hear we feel the things we smell no 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 not just the physical activity but we live by the word of god beloved i came to tell you that there is power in the word of god the bible says that in genesis whatever god said god saw whatever god said with his mouth god saw because he was saying words and what he was saying was creative had creative power so whatever god said when god says let there be light there was light whatever god said god saw there is power in the word of god the word of god has power to transform situations the word of god has power to bring deliverance the word of god has power to bring healing the word of god has power to revive marriages the word of god has power to restore your broken situation and to bring restoration there is power in the word of god man shall not live on bread alone just by bread but every word that proceeded from the mouth of god that is the word of god for you today that you don't have to be dependent on just yourself or your wisdom or on your knowledge or your understanding you just don't have to depend on your financial abilities or your career or what you have you just have to believe and hold on to the word of god man shall not lean on bread alone it is not just your finances, your income that you are bringing into the house that can sustain you. I want you to know that if you can hold on to the word of God, to Jesus Christ, he is more than enough to supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. If you are able to hold on to Jesus Christ, he is able to give you the grace to be able to overcome your sinful lifestyle and help you to become holy and perfect. It is possible with the word of God. The word of God has the power to bring transformation. The doctor says that you are sick of this high blood pressure diabetes, arthritis, uh, uh, heart problem, you know, but the word of God says that he set forth his word to bring healing and deliverance. There is power in the word of God. So child of God, don't rely only on physical things, your physical abilities or the report of the human beings or what people are saying. Depend on the word of God. What is God saying? That's why it's relevant that you and I, we read the word of God and allow the word of God to transform our lives and our situation. The word of God has power to transform and change every situation. The Bible says that God has exalted His name above his word above his name he has exalted his word above his name so whatever god has said concerning your life that is what will surely come to pass there is power in the word of god man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of god so today i don't know what you are going through maybe your present circumstances your present um, challenges is overwhelming but i came to speak the word of god into your life that there is hope for you there is hope for you 
what you are going through right now, God himself will help you and you will come out successfully. Whatever you are going through, because we are living in hard times. It now in America, people are finding it increasingly difficult to put bread on the table. People have been unemployed. We have 46 four million people right now who are out of, who are living in poverty line. We have almost 20 million right now who are looking for jobs and are not finding jobs. We have many people who are out of war. Almost 40 million people are out of seeking for job and yesterday they don't have job it is increasingly difficult for people to be able to supply the basic needs for their family some children do not know where bread uh, they are going to be able to help them sustain themselves in a given day we are in America, but it is becoming like a third world nation because times are becoming hard. That is why I'm saying that you cannot just live by bread alone, physical, or you cannot live by bread alone, meaning that looking up to the government, looking up to the Republicans or the Democrats, or looking up to the systems, because the systems are failing. But if you and I will put our confidence in Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God, I tell you, Jesus Christ will never fail you. He will come through because He is the Word. He is the word. He will supply your need. He will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Beloved, hold on to the word of God. And the word of God will change your situation. The word of God will pave a way for you where there seems to be no way. Jesus Christ once time said that he is the bread of life. Anyone who eats his body will never hunger. And everyone who drinks of his blood will never test. Beloved, I want you to know that if you come to Jesus Christ and you accept Him and you believe on Him and you walk with Him and you have fellowship with Him, He will never fail you. He will make sure you never hunger or you never test. That's why David could say that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Precious one, I am speaking the word of God to you and I know that the word of God is going to transform your situation because the problem that you are seeing today, the problem that you are going through today, the challenges which is overwhelming, which seems impossible, tomorrow I'm telling you it will be history because God will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Only believe in the word of God. Only believe in the promises of God. Only stand on the word of God because man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds. The doctor says that you, you, you are, your, your daughter, your son or your husband or your spouse is about to die but the word of God says that he will not die, he shall not die but he will live and declare the, word of, uh, the works of God according to the economy it is very difficult for people to find jobs people are being laid off but this is the time for God to open a door for you for you to get your job Maybe your marriage has been it's at the verge of collapsing, but I came to tell you that God is about to restore that marriage because God is about to change the heart of your spouse. Circumcise his heart, give him a new heart, take away the heart of stone and place in that person the heart of flesh and create in him a new heart, a new spirit, a renewed a right spirit that God himself will restore that marriage back again. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but today I want you to know that don't give up. Don't give up for God says that he's about to fight for you and to bring restoration. One of the things I want you to know that when you come to take in the spiritual food, people are relying on the physical food, the physical structures, the physical things on this world to help them, to sustain them, to help them overcome the challenges in, in, in this world. But everything is falling apart. You can't trust the government. Even they have their own debt. The, the, the government of America right now have trillions of uh, trillions uh, uh, um, debts which they can't even settle themselves. They are trying to build themselves out. They are unable. So how can you fix your eyes or place your confidence in them? You can't trust Obama. You can't trust the Republicans. You can't trust the Democrats. Nobody can help you. Only God. That's why today I'm admonishing you. I'm directing you to Jesus Christ who is the word, who is the bread of life. If you come to him, he will help you. He will give you a spiritual food that will sustain you. He will give you grace that will empower you and help you to overcome all your situations. When you come to Jesus Christ, He will bring refreshing to you. When you come to Jesus Christ, He will renew your strength. When you come to Jesus Christ, He will restore everything that has been destroyed. When you come to Jesus Christ, He will revive you. When you come to Jesus Christ, He will forgive you and put you on the path of righteousness and prepare you for His soon coming, His soon return, so that you are not left behind. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Today I came to tell you that there is too much hope in Jesus Christ. Don't allow yourself to be depressed, anxious, fretting, and worrying, and, and you know, almost wanting to even commit suicide. You no, know, Giving up, don't give up. Turn to Jesus Christ. 
Turn to Jesus Christ. He is the word, the bread of life. He is the bread of life. He will give you, when you turn to him, you will never hunger again. You will never thirst again. Man shall not live by bread alone, beloved, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the word of God is Jesus Christ. He will sustain you, beloved. I don't know what you are going through, but if you will turn to him, he says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take upon you, my youth, for you, you know, my, take, up, take, take upon you my bed. But his burden is lighter than your current burden. Your current problem is overwhelming. Jesus says that cast your burdens unto him, for he cares for you. Cast your needs unto him, for he cares for you. Jesus Christ is not just interested in saving you from your sins. He's also interested in sustaining, refreshing, restoring you, strengthening you to help you in life. He doesn't save you just to abandon you, to allow the devil to molest and frustrate your life on earth. He's a very present help in times of need. That's why I told you that a righteous man, a child of God, will go through many trials, many tribulations, many difficulties, many uh, setbacks, many disappointments, many rejections, but God delivers them from them all. Precious one, today I submit to you that Jesus Christ saves, Jesus Christ helps, tend to him with your problem, and he will give you peace. He will restore you. He will take away your heavy burden and place upon you a lightweight burden, and it will be well with you. May God richly bless you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God that proceeds, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I'm going to end this broadcast by um, giving you uh, two quiz questions, and in your spare time, look for the answers. And if you know it, just uh, uh, highlight me or let, let, let us know you got the answers right. The number of books in the Old Testament are how many? What are the number of books that we have in the Old Testament? Is it 39? Is it 66? Is it 27? Or is it 31? How many number of books do we have in the Old Testament? The Old Testament, how many number of books make up the Old Testament? Is it 39 books? Is it 66 books? Is it 27 books? Is it 30, uh, 31 books? I'm talking about Genesis, you know, from Genesis to Malachi. How many books make up the Old Testament? And the next question is, how many lives did Abraham eventually plead for Sodom and Gomorrah? How many lives, when Abraham was pleading to God, how many lives did Abraham eventually pleaded for? So that God, if you can, if this people, amount of people live holy, will you still destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? How many did Abraham finally end? And God says that if I could find this number of people, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Was it 50 people? Was it 45? Was it 10? Or was it 30? How many lives did Abraham eventually plead for in Sodom and Gomorrah? Is it 50? Is it 45? Is it 10? Or is it 30? These are our two quiz questions. Join me in my next um, Eagle's Diet. May God richly bless you. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, today we've learned of your word. Your word says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from your mouth. Father God, today I pray that all your children, hearing the sound of my voice, will, will, will trust and hold on to your word will be depend on your word knowing that you are able to change their circumstances through your word and so they should put their confidence in your word not on the government or on their own abilities or on human beings because human beings will disappoint them government will collapse people will come and go the uh, empires will come and go, but only your word endure it forever and ever. The Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word will never pass away. And Jesus Christ, you are the word of God. So whenever we put our trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, he will never fail us. He will always come through and help us in times of need. Father, please, anyone hearing the sound of my voice going through a challenge, I pray your word into their lives that today you will let their present circumstances become history tomorrow by coming in for them and making a way 
way for them where there seems to be no way. May God richly bless you. I'm also going to end by telling you, precious one, we are in the end times. Very soon, Jesus Christ will be coming soon. So prepare yourself in season and out of season. In season and out of season. Make sure that you are living a holy life. Make sure that you are desiring to know God and you are separating yourself from the worldly systems and also you are um, not living a carnal Christianity. Be holy because our Heavenly Father is holy. Very soon, the rapture will be taking place. Prepare yourself. In Jesus' name I pray. Prepare yourself. May God bless you. Bye.